guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and today is day 28 in our 30 tips in 30 days video series and in this lesson I'm going to show you how you can replicate HDR photography in Photoshop. Alright guys, so today I want to show you a cool technique that will help you to kind of uh, reproduce an HDR effect with your photos. And uh, for those of you guys who don't know or haven't seen uh, much HDR photography, uh, what that stands for is high dynamic range. And it's basically a technique used in uh, photography to produce a, a greater dynamic range uh, of luminosity than is, is normally possible, um, which is basic, basically the, the range of light to dark. So um, typically uh, an HDR photo will use, you know, anywhere from three, at least three photos, I believe, um, with different exposure settings, and it will kind of take those three and merge them into one. Um, so that way you're getting, you know, the full spectrum, so to speak, of, uh, of light and exposure. So um, this is kind of a cool trick that I learned recently um, that will, you know, replicate that effect pretty closely. So I'm just coming in here and uh, making a copy of my layer by pressing, uh, selecting the background layer and then pressing Command J on the keyboard to make a copy. Um, from there, what you're going to want to do is come down here and add a adjustment layer. Um, and you can either do black and white or hue saturation. And then check off, you know, use it as a clipping mask if you, if you wish. Um, fuck. Alright, so all I'm doing is uh, making a copy of this uh, original background layer by selecting it and then pressing Command J. Now from there, uh, what we want to do is just desaturate this so we can come here and select uh, black and white from the image adjustments menu okay and then just uh, hit OK and leave those settings as is alright from here uh, what you're gonna do is invert the image by pressing command I on your keyboard and then we're just gonna change the blending mode to overlay okay and then uh, there is one more step uh, what you want to do is come to filter blur Gaussian blur. Okay, and you can play around with these uh, settings a bit. I'm going to try something around there. It looks kind of cool. There you go. Maybe around 56 for this image. And then hit OK. And there you go. You can see now, like, we have, you know, a much wider range of, of highlights and midtones, and, and uh, even the shadow areas are looking more, you know, rich and, and defined. So, um, that's a pretty nice looking effect and if you want to push it further um, one thing that you can do is merge these layers merge both of them actually by uh, pressing command option shift E and that's going to merge all the visible layers so your background and the uh, HDR layer that we created alright and then to take it one step further I'm just going to go to filter other high pass and apply a high pass setting set to uh, blending mode of either overlay or maybe soft light, um, which you can then see will, will make it a little bit sharper. So that's just a nice uh, nice little extra tip there that you can add to these uh, HDR images. And all I've done is uh, grabbed both of those layers and put them into a group folder um, so that you can see them before and after. So let's try this one more time on this image, all right, just so you guys can see uh, the effect. Again, I'm just going to make a copy of the layer, going to desaturate it, invert the image, command I on the keyboard, change the blending mode to overlay, and then apply a Gaussian blur. Okay, And you know, the, the amount of blur that you want to have is going to be different in every image, so um, you know, just kind of play around with the slider and, and see what you like. Alright, and then we're going to merge all visible layers. Again, that is Command Option Shift E. And then we're going to go to Filter, Other, High Pass. Hit OK. And then change that to uh, Soft Light. And again, so you guys can see the before and after of this image. That's a really, you know, cool, cool uh, photo effect there that we're getting. So um, you guys can kind of see how this is. Uh, you know, affecting the original image in both instances here with, with both of these nice uh, animal portraits and, uh, you know, but this will actually work really well too for, you know, landscapes or uh, images of cities or, or anything like that. And it's uh, it's been a pretty popular trend for a while now. 
Um, so I just wanted to share that tip with you guys because I, uh, I just thought it was cool. You know, it's kind of a fun thing to do. Um, so that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, today's tip. And if so, please uh, like, comment, or share. And sign up for our newsletter and let us know how we can help you design better. Thanks, guys.